A three up amp base active circuit realizing notch or band stop filter is shown here. We want to understand how this works and find out V out as a function of input voltage Vs in sinusoidal steady state analysis. Assuming that all the op amps are not saturated in linear mode of operation properly biased, you can see all of them are in negative feedback. So then virtual short holds for all three, meaning that the voltage at negative terminal should be equal to voltage at positive terminal. With that in mind, then at super low frequency, we know that impedance of cap for all cap is 1 over JC omega in sinusoidal steady state analysis. When frequency omega is close to DC, then it's close to zero, denominator is zero, and then the whole impedance goes to infinity, caps are open circuit, infinite impedance at super low frequency. If that is the case, C3 is open, at super low frequency, Vs is not going to the bottom of M, so V2 will be zero at super low frequency. The only thing that happens is via V1. In that scenario, C1 is open, C2 is open, so the circuit uh, at omega approaching zero, basically DC, uh, circuit looks like this. You have Vs and via R1, we go to this node and cap, cap open, so nothing goes from middle between R1 and R2. We go directly to positive terminal of op amp. And from negative terminal, we are going to uh, R4 and R3. And then we have V1. And then from there, we go to R9, this R9. And finally, from there, we go to just via R11 we go to V out. So you can see because no current flows to, through the input uh, terminal of op amp because input terminal of op amp in linear operation for ideal op amp when it is feedback loop negative is in infinite impedance. So no current flows, Vs actually shows up here and Vs shows up here. So V1 with respect to Vs is just simple voltage division. You can say V1 is simply uh, 1 plus, it's a, it's a non-inverting amplifier actually, it's 1 plus um, and it's going to be R3 over R4 um, times, times Vs. And uh, therefore you can say now from V1 to V out, V out it's a, so this first one is non-inverting amplifier. The second one is an inverting amplifier. V out with respect to V1 is negative R11 over R9 and times V1. And I'm going to use this equation and substitute V1 with 1 plus R3 over R4 times Vs. So nice thing at super low frequencies, this is actually the the, the equation that governs the relation between output and input. As simple as this, at super low frequency. That is the gain of system. At super high frequency, what's going to happen? When omega approaches infinity, Zc1 over Jc omega in sinusoidal steady state analysis, in denominator we have very large omega, therefore impedance of cap goes to zero. All four caps approximately, they are shorted. When they are shorted, what's going to happen is C2 is shorted, so positive terminal of top up amp is connected to ground effectively, AC ground. Negative terminal is AC grounded. Since this point is AC grounded then, it means that the voltage drop across R4, AC voltage drop across R4 in sinusoidal steady state analysis is zero. It means no AC current can go through R4. Uh, can go through R4. Therefore, it means no AC current can go through R3. So the no voltage drop across R3 as well, it means V1 has to be zero. So all I'm trying to say is at infinite frequencies, V1 is zero. Vs cannot contribute to V1. Therefore, Vs can only contribute to V2 at super high frequency. At that point, C3 is shorted, C4 is shorted. Therefore, Vs uh, directly shows up on positive terminal 
input terminal of the bottom of hemp. So what looks like is something like this. We have, effectively, we have VS directly connected to positive input terminal of lower up hemp. Voltage division is there via R7 and R8. And from the output of op amp, of course, I don't care about the connection um, from VS to, uh, say, VR5. So this connection is there as well, but I don't care because that's not defining for me. Because VS is here, VS is here as well, because of, again, the virtual short between the positive and negative input terminals of op amp. And then uh, we have V2. And then from V2, we, via R10, via R10, we go to the input terminal of the other op amp, and the rest of it is as the top one. So we have this op amp grounded on the positive terminal, and then we have R11, and we go with V out. In this case, we can easily show that we are dealing with the situation where V out is equal to, for the same reason, Vs shows up here, there is a voltage division between V2 and Vs via R7, R8, and then V2 goes out to V out. So this, this first amplifier is in non-inverting structure, and the second one is in inverting structure. It will be negative R11 over R10 for the gain of inverting amplifier times, and then 1 plus R7 over R8 times Vs. So with this, for the same argument as I mentioned uh, during the discussion for the top one. So the, the, the message is the gain of amplifier in super high and super low frequency is now defined and we understand how this circuit is working. At high, super high, super low with a gain, Vs is passed to the output. In the middle frequencies, that's why we say it's band stop or notch, we end up dealing with uh, exactly crossing frequencies that will match the poles created or generated by C1, C2, R2, R1, and C3, C4, R6, R5. And as a result of that, uh, and also contribution of R3, R4, R7, R8, as a result of that, we will hit those poles, and those poles will, uh, or zeros, uh, uh, will, those will kill uh, the signal itself. So we end up with a notch or band stop, basically relationship between, between the output and input, it looks like some it looks like something like this. So we have uh, V out as a function of V S and then X axis is omega. At DC we have a gain that is obtained here. At high super high frequency we have a gain that is obtained here. So it looks like something like this. Um, so there is a threshold below which we have the DC gain, there is a threshold in terms of the omega values, omega 2, omega 1, that above that we have this gain, this gain shown here, and in between we have some band stop or notch behavior that this circuit is realizing. If somebody is interested to find now, now that we understand intuitively what is going on in this circuit, if somebody is interested to find VO over VS uh, in uh, sinusoidal steady state analysis, it will be a straightforward uh, as we discussed, this node here has a voltage R4 over R3 plus R4 times V1. This voltage here has a value R8 over R7 plus R8 times V2. Because of virtual short, you can say these two voltages show up at positive terminals of corresponding op amps. And therefore, you can compute the current going through R6 and the current going through C2. That is the same. Uh, the current goes through R6 is the same current that goes through C4. The current going to C2, C2 is the same current going through R2 because no current flows through, through the input terminals of ideal op amp because of infinite input impedance of ideal op amp. With that in mind, uh, it's easy to find uh, voltage at node A and voltage at node B as a function of V1, uh, as a function of V1 and V2. So as a function of V1 and V2, I mean as a function of these guys. As a function of V1 and as a function of V2. 
So how do we calculate that? As simple as this, we would say, uh, okay, VA is simply uh, R2 plus 1 over C2S divided by 1 over C2S times uh, R4 divided by R3 plus R4 times V1 because that's the voltage in positive terminal and that's the voltage division between VA and positive terminal which I wrote it here. You can simplify this further if you want and if you do that you end up with 1 plus R2 C2S uh, times R4 divided by R3 plus R4 and uh, of course you can always simplify this as well if you want but uh, times V1 so this is VA as a function of V1 that we found here you can do the same thing for VB VB as a function of V1 uh, you can also do the same thing so VB is uh, of course R6 plus 1 over uh, C4 so it's a division between voltage division between R6 and C4 for VB versus V positive terminal that is uh, this value here so R6 over uh, plus 1 over C4S divide by um, and you have R6 and uh, then we have times R8 divide by R7 plus R8 times V2 so if you simplify this you will find that we have um, R6 C4S plus 1 times, of course, divide by R6 C4S times R8, divide by R7 plus R8 times V2. So we found VB as a function of V2 as well. Now, what is the point? Well, the final point is as simple as just saying uh, as simple as saying that, okay, as soon as we get to V1, and uh, we, we also have to write a KCL, KCL at node A and KCL at node B. So let me also do that, KCL at A, you get uh, VS minus VA divided by R1, that's the current that is flowing this way, this current, should be equal to this current plus the current that goes through C1. So you would say is equal to VA. Um, of course, the current, you don't need to re rewrite VA. That current is what we calculated is this voltage divided by 1 over C2S. So we have um, C2S times R4 divide by R3 plus R4 times V1. That's this red current going through R2 and C2. And then we have the top current that is VA minus V1 uh, divided by 1 over C1S plus C1S times VA minus V1. Okay, so that's one KCL. And the only thing we need to do is we need to substitute for VA Uh, using uh, the equation we found here. So if we substitute VA as a function of V1, we end up with the equation that relates completely V1 to Vs. So this equation basically says, uh, this one basically says, V, we end up with saying V1 is a function of Vs. That's what this equation is saying. For the same reason, if we write KCL at node B, So KCL at node B, we have uh, CS, C3S times, that's VA minus VB time uh, over 1 over C3S. So C3S VS minus VB equal to this current that we already computed. So it's, uh, it's this current, R8 divided by 
R6, R7 plus R8 times B2. That's this voltage on positive terminal divided by R6 plus. Uh, so what I'm doing is, what I'm doing is a KCL means this current through C3 should be equal to the current through R5 plus the current through C4. So plus VB uh, minus V2 divided by R5. So what is the benefit here? The benefit is I can still go with subst substituting for VB here and for VB here from this second equation I found on top as a function of V2. As a result, it will turn out that V2 can be defined as another function of Vs. With that in mind, the last superposition would be what I re write at the bottom here. So um, using superposition, I can just say V out is a contribution of V1 to V out plus the contribution of V2 to V out. That's superposition. And you can see that from V1 to V out is just simply one inverting amplifier with a gain of negative R11 over R9. For V2 to V out is simply another non-inverting -inver amplifier with a gain of negative R11 over R10. So V out is simply negative R11 over R9. V1, negative R11 over R10. V2. In this final equation, I just need to substitute uh, v out, uh, for V1 from what I found here, and also for V2 for what I found here. As a result, we will end up having V1, V out, as a pure function of <clears throat> minus R11. Uh, as you can see, V1 is f of Vs. So a function of Vs divided by, of course, R9. Plus, I factored out minus R11 outside, plus another function of Vs for V2 divided by R10. So if you want, that's the final equation that I needed to arrive at. And uh, that concludes this discussion in terms of both intuitively discussing what's happening in this circuit and also showing the way uh, to compute uh, V out as a function of Vs. I hope that this is helpful.